Okay, so Bismillah. We're going to be talking about randomness and God, and how also it relates to suffering. Uh, but let me just start by with certain basic assumptions uh, here. Uh, m people who believe in God have worked uh, consciously very hard to prove design and orderliness, and uh, that is a good thing. However, uh, nothing can be random. And when we say nothing can be random, we're talking about the human perspective of randomness, human observation of randomness. Because that would mean chance. Nothing in the universe of God should be left to chance. It can't be if there's a God. Everything should be in harmony. Everything is in harmony. So if there's randomness, if, if everything is random, then things can happen by accident and maybe we're here by accident. But if there is a design, then we're here by design. If it's an orderly thing, then we're here by a design. And uh, nothing can be random because that would equal to chance. And chance would equal to the possibility of the fact that there may not be a God. However, uh, this is the exact assumption where we try to bring orderliness and design and uh, harmony uh, into the universe uh, without allowing randomness. Uh, and so this is exactly what I want to challenge. And actually, maybe perhaps after this uh, video of mine, you will come out of this actually feeling uh, a you actually seeing God even greater than when, than in this assumption, okay? And so, you know, we have the laws of motion, right? Uh, the laws of mo motion that everybody knows about, gravity, as I walk along, I know that pretty much the next step that I'm going to take is going to be pretty safe. I'm not going to go out in space somewhere because gravity is going to be changing. It's not random. It's constant. It's necessary for life. If there was no uh, consistency, in, then there would be a problem. And uh, about that, I want to mention that um, we have become so used to uh, the laws of motion and gravity and so on and so forth that we from there, deduce that all physical laws, all laws of nature, are pretty constant. And that is not true. The fact is that there is a lot of randomness. Um, when uh, quantum physics, a lot of what quantum physics, uh, the whole subject has to deal, is, is dealing with a lot of randomness. Uh, when an electron gets excited, the fact that two, one atom can be in two different places at the same time, the fact that uh, even if you take something as simple as when water gets colder and colder and colder, it gets, becomes ice, and when it becomes even colder, it becomes water again. So the point is that there is some randomness. And randomness is very fundamental to nature. And uh, now what I want to also say is that keep in mind that everything that we see and feel and touch and observe is made of three particles, a nucleus, the, the nucleus, the proton, and the electron. Okay, so I'm made of the same three particles, and you're made of the same, same three particles. And those three particles are that make everything in the universe that we know of from a physical perspective. Now, um, now electrons, they move from a grounded state to an excited state uh, randomly in terms of there's some basic level of prediction you can do, but it's pretty random. And the reason that that is important, that to realize that there is randomness in nature, is important for the following reasons, and it alleviates the following problems from what I see. One is, we cannot box God in a, we cannot put God in, in a box of orderliness. 
God is beyond these boxes. So he can't. So boxing into a box of order limits him, meaning God, in his framework, in how he does things. And so, on the one side, randomness means something miraculous. And I'll give you an example. Things in nature happen randomly. That's just the way it is. From Allah's perspective, it's not random because he knows what's going to happen. But from a human perspective, when a human is observing it, it's random. So, randomness leads to miraculousness. So, for example, somebody has cancer. They're in the hospital. Doctors have said he has 5% chance of living. He comes out of it. He survives. This is a real story, actually. So, this is something that was random. It wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened. It, there was a very little chance of it happening, and it happened. It was miraculous. But on the other hand, randomness also allows for suffering. Because randomness means disorder, and disorder means suffering. If you accept this assumption of mine, that randomness leads the way to suffering, leads the way to disorder, then you would agree with the fact that randomness, on the one hand, something that's random, miracles of the prophets of Allah, something random, doesn't really happen, but something, at, some, something extraordinary happened, which in this case is really random, it doesn't, but the prophets of Allah were given that. So something random happens, something miraculous happens, somebody gets healed, so on and so forth. But on the other hand, something random happens, there's suffering. So on the one side there's miraculousness, the other side is suffering of, of randomness. And this is just one or two examples. Now what is interesting is, in Surah Al-Falaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul falaq. I seek refuge from Allah, from the Lord of Falaq. And Falaq has many meanings, one of which means to split. Or to, uh, to you know, when uh, you could say the, when the atom splits, when the atom splits is one of its meanings. And so, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ I seek refuge from the Lord of Falaq, from when the atom will be split, okay? From when the atom is split. And when the atom is split, مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ From the evil that he's created. Because atoms and subatomic particles, the splitting of atom, uh, atoms and hitting of atoms, this science is the science of quantum physics, which, uh, which Allah is using here. I seek refuge in the Lord of Khalaq from the breaking of the atom or the splitting of the atom to min sharri ma khalaq from the evil that he's created. Because that is a world of randomness, the world of uh, quantum physics, the world of splitting the atom. is a world of randomness. And that world of randomness is a world that leads to, uh, that has shut the possibility of shut in it. So, min shafri ma khalaq. So, I seek refuge in Allah from the Lord, who is the Lord of the splitting of the atom, from the evil that he has created. Because the splitting of the atom allows for disorderliness as, as is reality, and therefore allows suffering. So, what I have said basically is this, is that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put everything in harmony, but there is randomness with it too. And only Allah knows from His perspective how the randomness is working. But in our perspective, from our perspective, the randomness allows for things to happen uh, either miraculously or in not so miraculously in shut, in evil you can say, or not so good, not in khayr. Khayr means good. So when there is randomness, it can go towards shah or it can go towards miraculousness. It's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point here is that uh, we want to box Allah in the cage of everything is orderly and, and harmonious and in design. That is true. Everything is, especially from his perspective, because Allah knows everything, how it's working. But from the human perspective, if you look at the universe, there is randomness, there's randomness in nature. There are things that are in nature that are not predictable. There are things that uh, are hard to predict, especially in the subatomic uh, uh, world, especially in the quantum physics world. And the randomness allows for disorderliness, which is 
another way of saying suffering or things out of harmony. So this is what I wanted to say, that God is, is the idea of randomness is not against God. So when somebody says, I don't see harmony in the world, that's okay. That doesn't go against God. That actually goes for God. Because despite the randomness, everything is still intact. Everything is still in His hand. Gravity still works. The important things still work. You know, the laws of motion still work. So on and so forth. So, randomness is there to some degree in nature. That is true. But orderliness is also there. And the both, how the orderliness and the randomness are working together side by side, and yet they are kind of like marajul bahrini and tatiyan, baynahumma barzahul la yabdiyan, the ocean, you know, where on one side of the sea is the salt water, and one side is the fresh water, and there's no barrier between the two, but they still, you know, there's like a barrier between them, but they don't cross one another in the same way you have Newtonian physics, working very constantly, very predictably, very measurably on the one side of the universe. And at the same time, just parallel to that, you have the quantum physics, for those people that know about quantum physics, running with the Newtonian physics side by side in a uh, more of a ad hoc, ad hoc, random nature and way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has both of these systems cut. And the fact that both randomness and harmony because if everything was harmony if everything was orderly then it would limit God in a sense that everything can become predictable but the fact that Allah shows us that not everything is predictable and Allah shows us that in nature everything is not predictable everything is not in your hands everything is not observable by you everything cannot be measured everything cannot be put into a formula so randomness that's what it means. Can't be put into a formula. Can't be measured. And orderliness means it can be measured. It can't be put into a formula. You can see it and see its orderliness and see its harmony. But the fact that there are elements that are harmony at one side and this and there is randomness on the other side, but they both work side by side and maintain the universe as it is, as it is expanding, going against the laws of thermodynamics, by the way, as it is expanding. And yet it is expanding and still maintaining itself, sustaining itself with the orderly aspects and the randomness, randomness aspects. And it's not going uh, haywire. Uh, is in fact more of a proof that there is a God than if there was only orderliness. So... Uh, and even if there was or only orderliness, in the sense that if there is everything is in order and there is no randomness, therefore there is no suffering, then it would be like we are in paradise. So that is not the case. We are here.